this question asks you to implement a queue using stacks. So let's make sure we understand the fundamentals before we start solving this. A stack follows the LIFO structure, which is last in, first out. So if I have a stack, it will look something like this. And if I'm going to add values, let's say I'm going to add A, B, and then C. And then if I want to pop values, I'll be popping them C, B, A, because it's last in, for, uh, last in, first out. This is for a stack. But if I'm implementing a queue, if I add A, B, C, then if I'm going to pop the values or if I'm going to remove values, then I will be removing A first, then I'm going to be removing B first, and then I'm going to finally be removing C first. While in a stack, it will be the opposite. This will go first this will go second and this will go third. So the question gives us the option of implementing a queue using only two stacks. So we can take the hint that by using two of these, we should be able to implement a queue using two stacks. Okay, so if we want to append a value to a stack, let's say S1 will be our main stack. So I have a stack here, and I do it with a closed button, bottom, sorry, and I add the value A. Now that I've added the value A, I want to add the next value B. But if I add the value B on top, um, I, and I pop B, then A, in a sense of a queue, should have been popped out first. So let's say I've added B now. And now I want to pop the value B. I want to pop the value, I, in theory, in theory a should be popped and not B because in a queue it's first in first out. Does that make sense? So what happens is with this usage of the second stack what I can do is I can add the values in the opposite way. So if I have B I need to add B here what I can first do is pop the A add it to my second stack so it goes this way so now I have A here then I would add B and then I would add A back. So if I were to call the pop function now, A will be popped since it follows the logic of a stack. So in a queue, the first value that's been added in should be the first value out. And since a stack can only add or remove values from the end, I will use the second stack to pop out all the current values in S1 and then append the newest value, then add back all the values from S2 to S1. Perhaps this will be clearer as I write the code. So if I'm pushing here, it will arbit arbitrary mean I'm going to append S1. I'm going to append X to S1. But if, in our case, if it's empty, then we can simply add it here. But what if we have a value A and I want to add the value B? Well, the first thing I have to do is while S1, so while there are values there, I want you to please pop up pop all the values out of there and these popped values i want you to append it to s2 so this value here is going to fly all the way and go into here so now that's empty and then b is going to go in here so this is what this part does and then once we're finished with that while s2 ha has value so I think I should use self here. While S2 has value, pop out these value from S2 and append them back to S1. So what this function would do, or sorry, this while loop would do, it's going to add it. Um, the A back to S1. So now this will be like a Q because A was the first value in and now A will be the first value out. So if I want to call the pop function, then it will be simply be return self.s1.pop because now it follows the Q. If I want to peak, then again, it would be simply this way. And if it's not empty, then simply check not self S1. 
And this is how we solve it. The only part that requires thinking is actually the push. And it already gives you a nice hint. Use two stacks. So you initiate two variables. Keep your S1 as normal, your main one. Apply these empty peak and pop. They're quite straightforward. And you just need to understand this logic of the second stack where you pop out all the values, store them in S2, append the new value, and then return them back. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.